Hey, my name is Michael Katz, and I am uh, with NOAA's Office of Response and Restoration, the HAZMAT team in Seattle. And I'm going to talk to you about a program I've been working on for the past three years called Marplot, which is the mapping component of a suite of software called Cameo. And uh, Marplot's a kind of an interesting case study for open source development and so on. It's unusual in certain ways. It's kind of like a, a mini GIS that has is a very focused uh, purpose. And because of that, uh, it it's, uh, takes advantage of a lot of GIS, uh, rather a lot of um, open source uh, components sort of as uh, libraries, but not as a framework. And that's because we want the program to be uh, sort of independent of relying on any particular framework to sort of live or die by that framework. Um, so anyway, you'll see that in some of the technologies that I cover. So Cameo is a suite of software that's used in emergency response, chemical emergencies especially. And um, it includes a um, five components of the of the suite. Uh, Cameo Chemicals is a database of chemicals, giving you inter, uh, information about their uh, properties, dangers, uh, how they react with one another. So that's a frontline tool used by emergency responders. Um, Aloha is a uh, air model, and it is uh, so you give it the uh, environmental conditions, wind direction, temperature, and so on chemical spill, release rate, and it'll give you a picture of, the, of its predicted plume uh, going downwind. Marplot is the mapping component, which I'll talk about here. Cameo FM is the database component. So all of this software is meant to help facilities uh, comply with uh, a lot of uh, legislation enacted mainly in the 1980s, uh, the emergency planning and community right to know. So uh, facilities have to report the uh, hazardous materials they have and uh, carry out simulations of what would happen with different kinds of spills. Tier two is a way for the communities, uh, a way for the facilities to submit that information into Cameo. So um, the kind of requirements for the Marplot program were uh, that it's a, it's a GIS, but with a focused, simplified interface. Very simple to be able to use it in an emergency situation uh, by this particular community of emergency responders and planners. At the same time, it's supposed to be a general GIS so that once people use it, they can use it for other things besides just the Cameo uh, uh, suite. Uh, the program needs to be able to operate offline, so that's important. So unlike a, a lot of the tools here, um, it, it, it uh, has to operate fully offline without a web connection. Um, we want to be able to support heterogeneous object types on a layer so users can just think simply in terms of layers and not about what types of objects um, are on those layers. And roughly to handle hundreds of thousands of objects smoothly and millions of objects if it comes to it. So those were kind of the requirements of the program. Uh, the Cameo suite and Marplot in general started in the 1990s and it, uh, uh, this is version 5 that we're currently on right now. So. Um, Here's a picture of the program, just to give a general overview. And again, we uh, really wanted to go with our own um, design, our own uh, interfaces, instead of uh, building it, say, as a plugin on top of uh, QGIS or something like that. We wanted to have full control over the interface. So this is a, a web standards-based interface for the program now, uh, the mapping area, table of contents here, and a simplified toolbar at the top. Um, program's uh, layer-based. Uh, layers can have uh, uh, graphical attributes on them. Layers are broken into sublayers, so we offer sort of a two-level um, a, a two-level hierarchy for users. Again, to simplify things, you can have layers and sublayers, but that's it. Um, layers have data fields, and the data fields uh, you can move them in and out of the display area here. So you can uh, say, I, I like to display this uh, field in my program, or I don't like to display that field. Um, at the object level, you can uh, see the same data fields and you can uh, edit the data fields um, right there. The current version of this program is actually using shapefiles as the internal data store. Uh, that was a mistake and we are moving everything to a, um, a, uh, 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 a SQL-based, SQLite-based da uh, database. But one of our original goals was to actually use shapefiles. You could just drag them in and out and use them directly as the data store. And you see some of that reflected here in the field type and max field length kind of attributes of the fields. Um, from the interface point of view, one of the things we spent a long time on was sort of these um, annotations on the map, so to have very uh, attractive and, and uh, simple to use annotations that could either be uh, tied to a world point on the map, uh, tied to a particular object showing some of the data, or tied to a screen point. Um, so, so the program is flexible in that way. In, and in particular, with a particular object, you can choose what specific things on an object, uh, object basis you want to display in the little pop-up that would come up when you click the object. Um, searching, you can search by the data fields that we saw on the object. You can also search by uh, distance, uh, di distance from a certain object, distance from a distance within, you know, this many objects. 
uh, th this distance within uh, that set of the selected objects. Um, when you do a search, you get the results, and again, you can choose which data fields you want to show. Um, we have a WMS support, so you can add either from a list of WMSs that we suggest for this particular community, or add an arbitrary WMS. Um, add an arbitrary raster image, so we're using the GDAL library to uh, handle all those different raster types. Uh, here's a raster on a map, overlaid on the map. Um, here's the interaction with the Aloha program in action. So the left window is a, a, a Aloha telling you what its prediction for the given plume is, and here on the right you've specified where the release location is, and it's plotted it on the map for you. Um, another Aloha screenshot showing, again, how Aloha can take advantage of uh, some of that, uh, the pop-up flexibility to show whatever uh, graphical information it wants to show. Um, we use the uh, uh, GEOS library, so we can uh, do all sorts of fancy uh, polygon things, unions of polygons. This, uh, on, on the left here, showing these different grid types has actually been a very uh, popular feature of the program for things like search and rescue operations or uh, determining uh, who to contact first from an epicenter of an event. Um, the, even this kind of simple level of splitting things into pies and, and uh, concentric circles and grids has proven to be one of the most important uh, features of the program for a lot of users. Um, we have uh, uh, census data built into the program, accessible offline with any, any area. And then we spend a lot of time, because the program has to be able to be used offline, we spend a lot of time on this interface for downloading offline tiles, um, which we get from MapQuest, that you can download, you can kind of get a sense of what do I have, if I had to operate offline, what, what tiles do I have, and so on. So we have this interface where you can see, based on the zoom level, how many you have, what, what, uh, how long a download would take to download everything down to zoom level 15 or whatever of a given area. So um, sort of a, a, a simplified, a convenient interface for managing those tiles. A uh, very flexible import uh, mechanism where you can uh, uh, import by layer and you can match, uh, match objects by ID on layer if you want to get uh, updated data for um, some, some data you already have. It can do the uh, overriding of those objects by ID. Uh, flexible export operation where you can uh, export uh, lots of different file types. So just some examples uh, of, of how the program's used. Um, in Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, it was very, uh, very useful because it was one of the only uh, GIS systems on scene that could operate uh, without an internet connection. Um, there's some examples of a tornado search in, in Canada. The guy had a bunch of uh, shelter locations and wanted to figure out which ones were actually used during the tornado. Uh, in California, during an earthquake drill, that kind of ring by ring uh, uh, branching out of, of who to contact in order was used. And again, for uh, search and rescue and even a prison break uh, search, that, that grid function is used by a lot of people. So um, the architecture of the program, um, how it's built, it's, it's structured as a client-server application, but it's deployed as a desktop application. So we actually have a, a, the client side is actually the Chromium embedded framework. So we're actually running Chromium inside of our own application um, to be able to uh, just use this web-based interface so we can use web standards for all of our interface because if we're going to go to the trouble of making a nice interface, we want it to um, you know, be able to exist on the web as opposed to just like a custom Q QGIS interface or something like that. Um, on the server side, uh, it, it's been a combination of Python and C++. C++ was used for all the fast stuff, and then it turned out that most of the program needed to be fast. Um, and so we're ac actually moving the whole uh, code base to C++ at this point. Um, but anyway, they, they communicate with each other over the local host um, HTTP. And, uh, the, and, the, and uh, Marplot itself communicates with the other programs in the Cameo suite using a kind of inter-application communication mechanism uh, that we had already made. So just to review some of the uh, components that we've used in there, there's the Chromium Embedded Framework. On, this is on the client side. Open Layers 3, which we got working with um, Google Tiles, which was a bit of uh, gymnastics there. Uh, jQuery you know, and, and some other uh, uh, client side libraries. And then on the server side, the big step was not relying on Map Server or, or another GIS engine, but to sort of roll our own. Um, SQLite for the database, the POCO library uh, um, has been very helpful to us, uh, the C-Image library for fast drawing. So we actually get faster drawing times than Map Server significantly because we sort of customize it to our particular needs and we wanted to do that. And then again, the GDAL library for uh, raster images and the GEOS library for polygon computations. Um, so in the future, um, the, more about the, the SQLite. Um, 
uh, really focusing on the fact that a lot of our users don't have a huge amount of data, so we can keep in-memory indexes for most of the data and draw it very quickly. Um, uh, moving away from Python, like I said, uh, maybe importing other file types, uh, and, uh, moving to a more flexible thematic mapping. Right now, the user can color objects, but they sort of have to do it manually, so to be able to color by uh, data value is, an, is another uh, feature that we're putting in. Um, and then also making the program work uh, with some of the other web-based Cameo programs. So that is uh, an overview of the Marplot program. As I say, I think the value to this community is sort of as a case study of building a uh, sort of a full GIS, a mini GIS from scratch, from components, as opposed to relying on an existing framework and stuff. So the code base, which is obviously open source, it's public domain. Um, could could be useful to sort of seeing how to uh, seeing how to we've pieced all these things together to make a uh, a working program. Okay, one minute. That's it. Um, so right now, um, a as it stands, there's really not a plug-in architecture for it. We do have this mechanism where other programs can communicate with the program to sort of tell it that I want to add such and such objects and such and such layers, and that's traditionally been our um, our mechanism for doing that. Um, most of our users right now are not so interested in actually pr programming a custom solution. They just want very convenient import and export functions where they can modify, the, take, take their objects out of the program, modify them, say, in just Excel, and then be able to bring them back and update those objects within the program. So we, fo we focused on making that very easy for the users. Any other questions about Marplot? Or the yep. The, the GeoNode stuff? Yeah, you know, um, I've sort of been heads down for the past three years, so just being here today and, and looking around and seeing this stuff, it's sort of, I feel like the world is different than when I started this three or four years ago, and it, it may be the case that we could um, uh, rewrite some of this stuff, building it on, on other tools, or maybe at least cooperating with other tools. This is sort of a long-term project for us, and so it's worth the investment to get it exactly right for the user, so even if there is something out there that would allow us to implement it very simply, um, we're sort of invested in making sure it works exactly right for our users, so we'd be very cautious about sort of relying on another, another tool. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Okay. Okay. Yeah, and e even in the SQL Lite that I've been doing, I'm not even using spatial light. I'm just doing, doing my own. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll look into that. Any other? Okay, thank you.